Hi folks, we are, believe it or not, 160 feet below ground level in a real mine. Not a fake one, a real one. This is on the site of the number nine mine we actually just talked about a little bit ago. So we wanted you to get an additional taste. I even drug Ashley down here with me. He did, he didn't pay me for this either. So I want a full experience. I have lots of questions. It's a little chilly and obviously I'm a little high maintenance with my umbrella, but that's okay. We're still gonna deliver the information that you guys are looking for. See, I beat her to the punch. I was gonna get on her about the umbrella, no. but- Well, not all of us can have a hat, Chris. Okay, so you just hold on to that hefty hat of yours. Well, I thought you were gonna say like I had a big head or something like that. Was I wasn't that going there, not <laughs> okay. today. No, she's actually, the bra she's actually the brains of the operation here. But you know, the brains really are kind to our right and to our left. These two gentlemen, uh, Dave uh, from the number nine mine, Scott, who we spoke with before, they're, they just, they can tell you so much about really where we're at right now and some of the really neat things. So Ashley, I'm gonna hand you this okay. for Dave, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dave, give us a little bit of information about what we really want to know here um, at number nine. All right, well, I, I have a lot of information, it's just a matter of what you want to hear. Okay, well, I want to know about the women. Let's just okay. go right for the we'll gusto, get back to right? Because I'm the only woman here. All we'll just righty. represent here. Yeah, for that's a second, interesting. Okay? So I do want to know, I mean, what is the history of women and, and okay. coal mining? All right, well, over in England in 1838, you had about 26 to 29 women and children drowned in the mine. And what happened then, they passed a law in 1842, no women will work in any coal mine or around them. And that, that went all the way to Germany, France, Italy, and all the countries. And as they came into America here to open up the mines here, that carried on. No women will work in the mines. Now, they had no women working in the mines. Over in Schuylkill County with the bootleg and independent mines, they snuck women in. But uh, the only women now working in the mines is down in the Bituminous Mines, and you have a lot of women down there, and they're doing a fantastic job. Now, uh, what happened then, during World War II, they decided, we're going, we're going to hire women, and they did hire 16 or 19 women from Neskahoning. They called them the Bloomer Girls because of the leggings that they had. And they were all set to come in, but the Union fought them and fought them and fought them, that uh, they didn't come in, and the, the war was over, they didn't need them anymore. The union was afraid the women take, would take their places. But when I talked to the women from the bituminous mines that came up, they said, a lot of the men even said to them, you know what, you're better than some of these guys who I work with me. So the women <laughs> did a fantastic job. But then in 1979, the government, our government passed the law, women could work anywhere they wanted. But the sad part of it is, some of them that started in the mines, that died, deep mines, they all shut down, and all them women <laughs> didn't have no job no more, except on the surface, which they do have now. So, Mr. Dave, you are truly a diamond in the rough, <laughs> and I am not joking about that. You Thank have you. so much information, um, and we are so grateful to have you here with us. So, if you have anything else to add to that, Scott, good luck following that one. Well, when I was younger, and the little bit that I did of mining underground, uh, the lady who pulled the cars out of the mine with the heisting mechanism, she was part of the family that I went underground with, and she was really the head of the thing pretty much. So, uh, but she liked to stay up top, even though every once in a while she would go her. underneath. Though this is cool, and I'm a little chilly. I will tell you though that we are provided jackets, so if anyone's worried like I was about the temperature in here, which right now I think it's thir no, 52 degrees, right? 52 degrees, they do provide jackets. So, so now that we're actually in here, um, Scott, tell us just a little bit about where we are and if guests come in here, what they'll see. Well, we are in the main tunnel, uh, which leads into the mine, and this is where all of the coal is evacuated out from all the parts of the mine that are operated. And uh, this is uh, the main gangway tunnel. Um, and uh, the miners would come in in the train that we came in, and uh, right, behind right behind us, and uh, they would go to work. And uh, in the old days, of course, everything was brought in, including them, by mule. Wow. And uh, then it became mechanized, as you can see. This is a battery motor that we have here okay. to bring us in. And this is what brings people in in the tour today. That's very but, cool. But uh, uh, this is a, a nice environment, by the way, in a way, 
to work in in February when it's 14 degrees outside. You come into a humid and, and nice place at 52 degrees. There you go. It's all about perspective. That's right? it. <laughs> so, so then, Scott, one, one other thing, too, is when miners work this mine, would it be possible that they would come in in the morning and not see daylight and leave before seeing daylight again? Oh, very much so, because uh, miners are independent contractors. They are paid on production. They are not standard employees as we would think of them today. And so what happens is if your foreman, who is responsible for your safety and the production of your team, if your foreman decided we're going to keep working until we get that coal out because we need to have so much money to pay everybody, sure. you're going to work long hours. So you could easily in the wintertime be in here well over eight hours, which means that you don't see any sunshine. So we have, I think, time for about one more question. So if the guests would come here uh, to the mine, what one thing should they really see when they go underground? Well, we have actually, here at the number nine, we have a lot of nice little stations of interest uh, that will probably appeal to everybody. Uh, probably one of the most unique things we have here that remains, many mines had them, but only we have one that remains, is the Dr. Young Memorial Hospital. And that was the first aid center inside the mine should wow. an accident occur. And it was that step of having one that helped uh, the survivability rate of accidents tremendously through the years. So as you can tell, folks, there's just so much to see here in the number nine mine. So we want to invite you to come to the number nine mine. Please log on to PoconoMountains.com, check out everything. Also, the 250th anniversary, uh, heritage anniversary of anthracite mining is coming up this year as well. And for Ashley and for me, Chris Barrett, thanks for watching.